Hi students, from last lesson we have started discussion on system analysis and design subject. In our last lesson we have discussed the introduction of this subject and we also discuss what is the purpose of studying this subject and then we moved on discussing the definition of system analysis and design and also we discuss various characteristics of system. Okay, And in this lesson we will discuss about various elements of a system. Okay, so each and every system will have some elements in it and we will be going to discuss what are those elements one by one. Okay, so here you can see I have listed down those elements of a system. Okay, and the first element is inputs and outputs. Second one is processor. The third one is control. Fourth one is feedback and then environment and the last one is boundaries and interface. Okay, so we will be going to discuss each and every of this element one by one. Okay, so now let us start our discussion with the first element which is inputs and outputs. Okay, so uh, we guys have already discussed the definition of a system. Okay, and in the last class itself I had told you that a system can be a, a software application which can take input from the user, process it and provides the output. Okay, so and I have already told you there may be many definition for a system. A system can be an organized collection of various components working together to achieve a common objective. Okay, so now here in the first element which is input and output. Uh, now let us see the first point which is system objective is to produce an output that provides value to the customers. Okay, so now every system is been built so that that system can provide output to the user. Okay, so whenever you will be using any software application or any system, you will be responding with that system and based on your actions, based on your request, the system will provide you the output. Okay, so when you get the output from the system and, and that output has to be accurate, that output has to be satisfied. When you get the satisfied or expected output from the system, that means you are getting the value from that system. Okay, so for what purpose you were using that system or a software, your purpose will get satisfied or fulfilled if the system will be providing you the desired output and that is the main objective of each and every system. Now the next point is output must meet the user's expectation. Okay, so that's what I said. So whenever we'll be using a system, we will be having some expectation in our mind. Okay, we will be having some uh, pre made assumptions about the system that the system will be going to give me so and so output. Okay, so if the system will if the system gets failed in providing that expected output, then that system is not a good system. Okay, so every system should meet the user's expectation. Okay, next point is inputs are elements that enters system for processing okay so an input can be anything an input can be an interaction of user whenever you click a mouse on any of the command or any of the feature of any software okay or whenever you pass a value to the software okay whenever you enter a value inside the system input can be anything an input can be a mouse click an input can be a data, an input can be like image or audio or video, okay. So, an inputs are elements that enters inside the system. When we provide the input to the system, the system will take that input, then it will be going to process that input. It will perform some operations on that input so that it can provide the desired or expected output to the user okay now the next point is every system takes input process and provide output okay so that's what we have discussed okay so each and every system the purpose of each and every system is so that we can user can provide the input to that system then system will going to perform certain actions or operations on that uh, input and once the processing has been done then finally system will provide the user expected output Okay, and now the last one is determining the type of input is also important here. Okay, at the very first thing we have to think about the input. Okay, we have to provide proper input to the 
system then only it's possible from the system to return as the output okay so the type of or determining the type of input or the analysis of determining what type of input we have to provide to the system that is also one of the important point here okay so this is everything about input and output element of a system okay so this is everything about the first element of the system which is input and output okay now we will move on to the next element which is processor here i have written down the points for processor processor performs actual transformation of input into output okay so in our last explanation i told you that system takes input performs some operations on that input and provide you the output okay so that processing will be done by the processor okay so what it does it transform the actual input into output okay the responsibility of the processor is to perform the transformation of given input so that the system can provide you the output okay next it is the operational component of the system okay it is since it is responsible in performing all those major operations on the input that's why it has been termed as an operational component of the system now the next point we have they modify the input totally or partially depend upon requirement okay so once the input enters inside the system then it's completely up to the processor to perform any operation on that input so if the processor wants to make changes in the input it can do that if processor wants to completely change the input or partially change the input so that it can provide the output to the user it can do that okay so these are the some points for processor okay so now we will discuss the third point which is control okay so here i have written down the points now the first point is saying it guides the system okay as you know that system takes input process and output so for doing those operations of input output and processing control unit or the control element will guide the system how you need to take the input and how you need to process it and how you need to provide the output to the user so all those controlling activities will be taken care by this control unit or control element of a system now the next one is it's a decision making subsystem okay so it's also one of the part of the system or we can also call it as a subsystem which is responsible in making the decision in a system and then next point is it controls the activities of input process and output okay so as it is been termed as a controlling or decision making subsystem in a system so it controls all the various activities of the system which is input process and output okay so if you if we try to understand this with the help of an example of an organization where a management will be there and management will be responsible in controlling the entire activities of that organization now management will be responsible to control the inflow details of an organization and handling each and every department of an organization and also outflow activities of that organization so similarly in the case of computer system operating system will be considered as a controlling unit of computer okay because operating system will be responsible in maintaining and uh, handling each and every activities of a computer exactly the same way control unit here in the case of system will be responsible in performing or guiding or making decision for each and every activities of a system okay so uh, this is everything about the controlling element of a system next we will discuss the feedback element okay so here you can see i have listed down the points and let us see the first point feedback is a way of measuring the usefulness of a system okay so with the feedback only we will come to know whether the users are finding this system useful or not okay whether users are liking our systems or not okay so when the users provide us the feedback about the system then only we will come to know the system is useful or people are finding it useful or not 
okay next point is feedback is an important feature of a system to evaluate it okay so we can surely evaluate the system based on the feedback taken from the customers or taken by the users and the next point is feedback can be positive or negative okay so whenever you go and ask for a feedback for any software application or any product in the market so different people might give you different opinion based on their experience of that product okay so some people might give you the positive feedback and whereas other people might give you negative feedback okay so it's completely based on their experience of that product okay uh, so both of these feedbacks whether it is positive or negative both of these types of feedback are equally important in improving the system okay so now the positive feedback reinforces system performance okay so whenever we get a positive feedback from the users it reinforces it strengthens the performance of the system and whenever we get a negative feedback it provides us information or what else we need to improve in our product okay so in both the cases positive or negative feedback is equally important okay so i'm sure you guys have understood this fourth element of a system okay so now we will discuss the fifth element of a system which is environment okay so now let us see the first point an environment is a domain in which system operates okay so when we develop a system and when we complete its development and now it's time for us to install that system on the client site that is in an organization then whosoever from that organization tomorrow will be going to use that system or perform some activities on that system all those comes under the environment that organization where we have installed that system consider as environment that is an environment for that system because inside that environment the system will be going to operate and then it's a source of external elements that affect on the system okay so what as they are saying this environment is a source of external elements once we install the system in an organization then various elements from that external source so now external source is an organization okay and elements here the employees who will be going to work that system so whenever we put the system in an organization then various people from that organization will going to come and operate or affect the system okay an example is organizational workplace okay and then last element we have boundaries and interfaces okay uh, so every system will have its own boundaries at the time of design itself those boundaries will be set up beyond those boundaries the system will not going to work okay so whenever you go to an atm machine uh, what operations atm machine provides you okay atm machine allows you to deposit money atm machine allows you to check for your balance atm machine allows you to change the password uh, withdraw money deposit money okay and other various options or operations so apart from these many operations if you want to clarify your doubts okay if you want to ask uh, the inquiries if you want to ask further information related to your loan okay and other activities if you also want to find those details in an atm machine then that atm machine is not been designed in such a way that it should give you those information those details so for getting those details you have to personally visit the bank okay so that is the boundary of that system okay so atm system is designed to perform some specific task beyond those task the atm machine will not going to operate so that is what the point boundaries and interfaces okay so uh, here we have discussed various elements of a system okay so i'm sure you guys have understood each and every element of a system and uh, that's all for this uh, lesson guys i will see you guys in my next lesson where i will be discussing about the various types of system